If you want to find dinosaur bones, you have to look in the right places. And getting bones from the field to the museum takes a lot of work. So let's get started here. Montana has a number of dinosaur sites. So we went there, along with paleontologist David Araccio, to learn what happens at a dinosaur dig. So we're in the main quarry where we've worked the last three summers. And uh, in the past weeks, we've exposed some larger bones of a ductile dinosaur. And they've been covered with plaster initially. And now we're kind of digging around them. We'll have to cover them more with plaster and, and burlap in order to get them out of the ground. So how do you begin the process? Uh, we basically sort of flatten the quarry out and kind of just go sort of peel off layers of the rocks and work our way down until we encounter something. Um, in order to protect the bones, we cover them with the, the white plaster jackets. And, and then we want to take the bones out as one piece. So, you know, due to fossilization and the geologic processes, the bones are all broken up. So we want to enwrap them completely in plaster jackets. Um, so we kind of have to trench around them to get uh, a full circle around the bones and then we can kind of wrap them completely. And then once that's done, then we can remove them from the ground. Should I bring that one around the nose, Eric? This area was an area that had lots of small eggshell, so we were kind of just exploring around that. And in doing so, we found two things. One, we found a couple eggs, small eggs. Maybe they're lizard eggs, maybe they're bird eggs, something like that. And then we also found uh, a lizard skeleton. So it was lizards and mammals also lived at the time of dinosaurs. We don't often think about them, but there are lots of small animals that might be familiar to us today that were around when dinosaurs were around. Could you describe what you're taking, what you're showing? So it's basically uh, uh, the remnants of a dinosaur egg clutch. Lots of broken eggshell, and then some, some parts of eggs. The rock is different here. Kind of there's this oval-shaped structure where the, the rocks have changed, and that might reflect the dinosaur's nesting. Um, maybe they brought vegetation in or dug in the soil and that kind of changed the chemistry of the rock so it's preserved differently. And then in here we do find partial eggs. This is one of the better eggs. So that's the part of an egg there. So that's one end here and then the whole egg would be about this long, so about yay big. They're kind of neat because they have a bumpy surface, kind of different from Modern reptiles and modern birds, they have kind of a goose-bumped texture to them. What kind of dinosaur are you finding here? What's the basic, what you're looking for? Um, we find lots of duckbill dinosaurs or hadrosaurs, so we found bones of them. And then we found two egg types, one of a dinosaur called Troodon, a small meat-eating dinosaur, kind of close to the ancestry of birds. And then we found another type of egg, a bumpy egg, that we don't really know who it belongs to. So it's some kind of, probably some small carnivorous dinosaur, but we're not really sure. It's a little bone, I guess. I'd put, I'd put some glue on it. Ooh, it's a troodon tooth. That's what I thought. Cool. It's a very small troodon very tooth. Small. So to understand dinosaurs, you also have to understand the, the environment they lived in and the things that lived around them? Yeah, that gives us the more of a complete picture. Why did you want to become a paleontologist? I like the idea of traveling in time, being able to go back 75 million years to the time of the dinosaurs and thinking about how, how dinosaurs lived and what their environment was like. But I also like, like it because there's physical things, there's bones and rocks that you can dig up and hold and look at. So there's also, so it kind of combines a physical aspect, you know, real hard objects and also kind of your imagination as well to kind of put them into a, uh, the time of 75 million years ago. If you're someone who's interested in becoming a paleontologist, what should you do? Study hard. Uh, it takes a little bit of knowing biology, so knowing something about animals, but also having appreciation about 
geology, the rocks, and how the earth is, is formed and how the rock layers are formed. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org.